Welcome to Grappling with the Gray, a forum for promoting an ethical mindset and ethical decision making to help us more clearly see both sides of con complex issues and better navigate the moral challenges of everyday life. I'm Rabbi Jonas Goldson, and I would like to welcome my guest for today. I have Carl Ulrichs, who works with healthcare issue issues and risk management in all forms, building yep. high performing teams and applying uncommon sense to a high risk world. I am Dave an insurance Bricker. agent and an and HR an insurance person. agent. Okay. And Dave Bricker is a speaker, presentation consultant, and sailing aficionado. He works with leaders and professionals to master the art of business storytelling on the stage, on the page, and on the screen. And Yolanto Pamiolto is vice president of information technology for EXIF Worldwide. He manages innovative initiatives aimed at reducing operating costs, improving profit, and growing revenue. Thank you all for being with me today. Thanks Thank for, having, you for me. having us. Pleasure to be here. And here is this week's ethics challenge. During his presidency, Ronald Reagan was often criticized for inaccuracies and misstatements. Sometime after he left the White House at age 77, it was revealed that he had been showing the first symptoms of Alzheimer's disease while still in office. Last week, presidential hopeful Nikki Haley called for mental competency tests for candidates over 75, clearly targeting President Joe Biden's expected re-election bid. On the one hand, we want to encourage respect for both the wisdom and the challenges of the elderly. On the other hand, since impaired ability is a natural consequence of growing older, we want to protect the elderly, elderly and those around them from the potential dangers of diminishing function. This may include increased attention to issuing driver's licenses, operation of motorized wheelchairs, and addressing incapacity to perform their jobs. How do we balance respect for the elderly against safety concerns while ensuring that they do not become victims of ageism. The floor is open. Well, an, an open question. Who amongst us has had to take the keys away from an aging parent? Um, For those who are listening, two of us raised our hands. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> and, Go ahead, Carl. Well, this is a classic ethical dilemma. I mean, I predict 30 minutes from now, we will have discussed some really interesting case studies, but recognize that it is a situational answer. Um, you know, there are a, there's a distribution curve of people at different ages who are high performers in different things. But if it's an industry that's regulated, and putting my HR hat on here, uh, for instance, what's the oldest you can be a commercial airline pilot? 65. And does that make me ageist? Because there can be some high performers who go beyond that. But just arbitrarily drawing a line in the sand to cut it off. Well, yeah, and you're raising an important point that it cuts across many issues that there are general rules of thumb, which is kind of redundant, that um, you know, may make sense. But when it comes down to individuals, some people we may need intervention earlier. Some people might be might not need that cutoff point, and it's very difficult to figure out how to navigate that uh, contradiction. Dave, you look like you have something on your mind. Yeah. Well, first of all, I'm gonna. Get, uh, we usually find more interesting answers when we don't answer the question as stated or we interpret the question <laughs> a little differently. So I'm going to preface for my remarks by saying that I'm not a member of a political party. I can sully my own reputation. Thank you very much. But when I going back to when I was about 25 years old, I remember looking at Ronald Reagan on the television and saying, sorry, the lights are on, but nobody's home. And this is the president of the United States. What are the ethics of how many people pretending that he's okay? Remember, this is the guy with his, with the new finger on the launch button. 
This is not a trivial position. So who is actually in charge? Now we come along with Nikki Haley calling for a mental competency test. And I'm thinking, hmm, how come nobody called for a mental competency test with the last president? And we can get into all sorts of things that people are gonna love me and hate me for, but let's look at what's at stake here. I would think that uh, President Biden would want to get that test and challenge the other candidates to get it as well, because people of his party and the Republican party are saying, hey, does he have it together? He's an old guy. It should be something he wants to demonstrate. Uh, whether we get into requirements for the job, unless it's like, well, you have to do this every year, and then we get into what are the criteria, and we get into all sorts of constitutional rights, and it turns into a, a nightmare of what the assessment criteria are. But I think you could make an argument that uh, even if those were voluntary things that you submitted to, if you refuse to submit to them, that you might be sending a message there. I don't know, it's, I don't have the solution, but I think it's much more complex issue than ageism. Yeah, I agree, um, Jonasen, I would say, anything, any requirement or any future test would have to be evidence-based practice, right? So we'd have to look at the science to say, at a certain age, it's not safe to drive or at a certain age. So there has to be some evidence and scientific, scientific evidence that proves that that's a valid requirement. But I also think if you think about like the 25th Amendment, right, which there is a measure in the 25th Amendment that says if we feel that a president is not competent or there's, there's, there's conditions that they can't perform their job, the cabinet can step in, the vice president can step in and they could most certainly, you know, uh, replace the president in, in that situation. So there are some measures in, in our constitution to protect us, to make sure we do have a competent leader, but it goes down to ethics. Uh, Jonasen, it's up to us and the candidates and the president to be truthful, to let us know, I am healthy, I could do the job versus I, I'm not healthy, I have a condition. So I think there's some, honesty from, from whether it's a candidate that's running for office or an existing president, there needs to be a sense of honesty to say, if there's a condition, they should reveal that to the public so the public is aware before they cast their next vote. So yeah, I like and, that, Yolanta. And I think it really goes to, to your point, Dave, yeah, that and, um, and, just, to, just, you know, it reminded me of the whole question about police body cams, you know, that can be seen as intending to trap and catch police or it could be seen as intending to protect police. And unfortunately, we live in such a politicized time that everyone is suspecting everyone else's motives. And even when something makes a tremendous amount of sense, um, we, everything is seen through the lens of who's who's playing the angle on this one. Mm -hmm. Carl, you have something well, again? Yeah, and, and Yolanta, when you are hiring, do you use any assessment tools to evaluate the applicants who, newsflash, people, people looking for work tend to lie? <laughs> newsflash. <clears throat> Yes. I mean, you know what, during the interview process, you, you know, ask the candidate about their experience, about their, you know, um, their expertise, you ask questions to see if they truly understand the different area that you're hiring for. So you do have an assessment. But I think for the president in this situation, it's the it's the voter that sh that says, I think this person is going to be a fit president or not a fit president. So that's the way our democracy works. But I do think that there needs to be a sense of honesty to so a candidate shouldn't hide anything if there's possible, you know, Alzheimer's or uh, possible conditions, Dave. And Yolanta, in principle, I agree with you. The problem is relying on the person who is of diminished competence to realize that they're losing that competence and report it is not necessarily the soundest system we could use. I think that there are, we really kind of need almost a, whether it's an oversight board or a group of physicians, a nonpartisan, it's tough because whatever decisions get made about somebody's fitness for offer, office, this is going to get politicized and it's going to be an absolute mess in the news, no matter what you do. And at the same time, 
do it does it make sense to just institutionalize every year every two years whatever it is the president and the vice president and maybe the speaker of the house i don't know how far down it goes congress for that matter maybe these people these few people who are leading the whole country uh should at least voluntarily submit to some sort of test i don't yeah. i don't know because they're they're the power that they have is vast the influence and if they screw up and you know the, the results could be armageddon um working at gregory and appel we have about i don't know 250 300 clients some of them are manufacturers who the task of an individual on the line is they have to understand how uh, a program CNC lathe runs. They have to be able to lift 40 pounds. These are testable. Um, the, the Montreal Cognitive Assessment made headlines with our last president when he announced that he passed it better than anyone else. Um, I was kind of curious about it, so I sought it, knowing we were going to discuss this, I sought it out and I took the assessment. I'm pleased to note that I passed. But uh, it's, well, for instance, just to give you a glimpse of what it is, um, there's some checking of, are you in touch with the world? You know, what is the date? What's, who's, who's the president is actually one of the questions. But then it gets into some cognitive and recall things where it will give you five words that have no relation to each other. It lists the words. And then uh, two or three minutes later, you are asked what those words were. Um, the current words, for instance, for just as an example, would be man, camel, paper, flowers, and table. Jonasson will be asking you in three minutes how you do this. <laughs> I, I guess my point is that we have to end early today. I think. Uh, yeah, that's right. after, <laughs> after, yeah, after last night. No, but the the point kind of is we can test for this. You know, um, Yolanta's point is a good one. Let's go to the science. You know, we can we can measure things. Yes, G given the influence and the importance of the task. It's uh, I, I don't have problem with with testing. I can't imagine why anybody would unless they have something to hide. Uh, and, and also uh, going to what Carl was saying with all of these tests, it's interesting because there's uh, Myers-Briggs, there's DISC, there's uh, the, uh, the PI, the uh, personality index, I think that is. No, it's predictive there's index, predictive but those don't measure. Index. Well, those are no, measuring what are you interested in and what are you doing. But, but the point being, you were talking about how people lie. And as these assessments get more and more sophisticated, they actually have hooks built in them to detect when people are trying to game the assessment. Yeah. If, it, and, if it's a normed assessment, that's true. And it's fascinating that starting and i guess myers briggs was one of the original breakthrough personality assessments but as these have evolved they've realized oh people give the answers that they think their bosses want and they've evolved ways to catch people who lie on their applications trying to be somebody they're not as if they're going to succeed at their job being someone they're not well they can be miserable at their job and then make all of us pay right <laughs> <laughs> um, let's circle back to ethics, though, because um, this is an ethical dilemma. How do we take away grandpa's keys and you're doing the right thing for grandpa? You know, who gives you the power to do that? Who's taking away the keys from the president and giving them the power? And Yolanta, you made a good point about the 25th Amendment. Um, I'm, I'm a, a big fan of Rush Kidder's book on how people make difficult decisions. And he put out, you know, these, when it's right versus wrong, that's easy. Just do the right thing. When it's right versus right with competing values, you know, and that's what this is. How do we not be ageist, but we protect the greater good, the public? 
Um, why we call it grappling with the gray in this case. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which a great point there, right? You understand to be president, to even run for office, you have to be at least thirty-five. So what's to say a thirty-four-year-old? can't be president right we have rules in place and and there's there are some criteria there so are we being ageist there to the 34 year old or 33 year old yeah when you too gray young. area too young yeah. I don't know I experience. That because that's often how you spot ethical uh consistencies but, is by but, flipping by flipping the narrative but you know I think at some time some we can all agree that there is some point at which um one is not mature enough even then there could be exceptions. So we have to generalize. But we in... And both on both yeah. ends, right? Exactly. Too young, yeah. too old. <laughs> exactly. I, I think you can get past the whole ageism question by simply making this a requirement of the position, regardless of the age of the person who holds it. So if there's a 35 year old president, they should have no problem passing the same competency test that a 90 year old president has to pass. And when they pass those tests, whatever the criteria may be, that's a much bigger discussion. But when they pass those tests, then everybody on both sides of the aisle should say, okay, <laughs> the lights are on, let's move on with other things. Yep. I don't, I think the ageism question is very easy to get around. Just test everybody. Don't make it age-based. In other areas, I mean, I remember um, when I was in high school in, in, in California, um, once you reached a certain age, I think it was 80, but I'm not sure, uh, you had to renew your driver's license every year. Right. Um, there are other states where there is no, you know, basically no requirements whatsoever. And yeah. And my, my grandmother never took a driving test. She would just, you know, back in the day, if you wanted one, it was issued to you. I think she started driving in the thirties. You know, you mentioned at the beginning, I, I mean, I got a call one day from a neighbor of mine who told me that she had been following my mother home and said that she was horrified. <laughs> <laughs> and we began that conversation. And, oh, and I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't pick the examples I chose out of the hat. I mean, even when my mother got a motorized wheelchair, she had to have a training course. And, and there was a point at which she they suspended her permission to use it, and she had to have that, you know, had to go back for, for re-education. Um, well, I was involved in a very high-speed head-on collision with an elderly person who should not have been on the road. And I was looking at the radio, and I looked up, and there was a car, and I swerved, and he sheared the right front of my car off. And uh, I, I came out uninj uninjured. The car was completely totaled. Now, speaking with his family, he's like, yeah, we've been thinking about taking him off the road for a while. It's like, well, yeah. good idea. Um, how's that going for you? Uh, so that, that was it. But, but yeah, those decisions need to be made earlier rather than later. And I don't think many of us are trained to make them. So to have some criteria you must be able to do this in order to keep your license or whatever it is that when it impacts, pardon the pun, the safety of other people, then yeah, yeah. you have to get a driver's license. Why not make the criteria more strict for everybody? Yep. Well, and what you're describing uh, from a dilemma standpoint is individual versus community rights. And um, you have to then break the tie on, is it, is it the individual's or is it the community's safety? Mm -hmm. um, well, let me take this into a really uh, uncomfortable area. Um, oh, my, my wife and I were both career teachers. My wife still is uh, teaching middle school, special ed. And uh, we had many opportunities to recognize a certain correlation between parenting style, or let's say parenting competence, and uh, the challenges of children in school and in life. Uh, and every once in a while, somebody makes some remark about how perhaps there should be some sort of a test to get a parenting license. Oh, uh, good Lord. <laughs> now, most of us 
recognize that that's just not something that we're going to, it's not a place we're going to go. It, it smacks of eugenics. Uh, <laughs> I and agree. yet, is there a job that's more important than parenting? <laughs> Why well, do we assume that everybody the, should be able to do it? The, the problem with parenting, I think, and this is a big generalization, I don't want to oversimplify an issue like that. It's not lack of testing, it's lack of training. Because generation after generation, wow, I got a baby on the way, I better figure this out. How much did I learn from my parents? Maybe more than I thought. Maybe I want to be like them. Maybe I want to be the opposite of them. But we all figure this out for ourselves. Yeah. There's, it's, it's not like in eighth grade they start parenting training or gender interaction training or business training for that matter. Mm -hmm. They're more concerned with making sure people can read and write. And that, that's a tough challenge right there. But there are so many skills that we never learn in school and then life tests us on them. And when we fail, the consequences are not just individual consequences. Well, and as well, and Yolanta, as a manager, if I was your HR person, I'd be coaching you into staying within the guidelines on what we can and can't. We, we can be discriminating. We can't be discriminatory. We have to have progressive discipline. We have to have uh, an awareness of diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging, so that people from all walks, people from all disabilities can find a, a, a fit in our society. Well, we also have to be able to protect society from people who don't fit. You know, that uh, we've... Uh, the news will have somebody freaking out. Why is it always United Airlines? Um, and they will be banished. You know, you can't fly anymore. Uh, there will be, I, one of, some of my clients are um, adult care organizations. And they will be calling on people in their homes and realizing that Many times in senile dementia, anger is manifested by the person who's affected, and they've got guns in the house. Um, this is this is a real concern, not just taking away grandpa's keys, but do we let him keep his guns? Yeah. Um, and I think it's it's interesting where this is all going, because when you get down to a family level, down to an individual member of society, and again, you've got people driving cars and carrying guns, and that's all legal, and there aren't age limits on it. But mm -hmm. when we start doing that, we create all sorts of civil rights messes, <clears throat> and, and we, yeah. we create these sort of one-size-fits-all solutions that don't fit anybody. And I think it's dangerous and difficult to extrapolate down to that individual citizen level, but if you go back and you talk about the president, and I brought it down to uh, senators and representatives, this 618, 613 people, whatever it is, the fact that these people are representing everybody else on a very high level, that's different to me. I don't, I don't, I mean, we, we can't manage driver license testing as it is. So I think getting on the individual level is just impossible and full, full of, of worms. But let's talk about, and again, if you don't want to do all the members of Congress, then let's do the president and his cabinet. But let's let these people demonstrate competency according to criteria that are defined by a bipartisan committee with the help of outside experts. I don't good see science. a downside yeah. to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't see a downside to it. I mean, I, I think we're lucky in a sense that we have a checks and balance system, right? So the president is not the only person. We don't have a king that's in charge and, and you know, calling the shots. There is a checks and balance. We've got an executive branch, a legislative branch, a judicial he can branch. Start wars. <laughs> Without, with Congress's approval, right? Ah, uh, that's in theory, <laughs> yes. But lately, they have yeah. But I mean, ultimately, I think, you know, going back to the ethics question, Jonas, and if the candidates and the, you know, 
the individuals in charge and in power are truthful and honest with the public, the public decides, the public votes and the public decides, is this person fit to be present? Do I have trust in this individual? Do I think that they have the mental capacity to do a great job? So, so ultimately you're all of our voice. This is why we, we all need to go out and vote and cast our, you know, um, cast our ballots mm -hmm. is because everybody matters every voice matters and we collectively make that decision and if you don't engage in the political process then you can't complain <laughs> yeah no that's also, exactly you know, right your, your point you know, Yolanda which I, I really do admire and in theory <laughs> I think you're absolutely right um a big challenge I see is that again we become so political that we're willing to excuse people on our side air quotes um and condemn people on the other side. And yes, our leaders should be um, honest. And, and we sh I believe that character is a critical element in choosing our leaders. And yet we seem to be seeing less and less of it as time goes by. Um, and that makes it very difficult to, <laughs> to, to, to uh, assess a situation in which so many people have set that aside as a, as a criterion. Um, yeah. There's just one more idea that comes into mind, which is a little bit of a, a tangent, but um, maybe can be good for a little comic relief. Um, you know, talking about people misrepresenting themselves in their interviews on their tests. So I, I just heard this the other day about a, um, a boss, employer, manager interviewed a candidate. A woman seemed very competent very much what they were looking for uh, they hired her and the first day at work she came in wearing ears and a tail saying she identified as a tiger uh, they didn't feel that this was conducive to the atmosphere that they wanted to establish in the workplace and yet they were very uncertain how to proceed <laughs> in dealing with it uh, so there it wasn't so much a, a matter of competence. It was a matter of fitting yeah. into the culture that the leadership wanted to establish in the offer, offer in the in the in the workplace. Yolanda, oh, yeah. you have any insight into that type of a situation? Oh, routinely. Uh, those of us that hire or advise those that hire, um, there's let me back up a second. The, the example you have, I am sure that person may have been a technical fit for the job, but not a cultural fit for the job and won't last. Uh, from both party standpoints, this is not a fit. They need to find an organization where their personal style is recognized and celebrated as I've, I, I've I've coached tens of thousands of people on job search and I every every pot has a lid my grandmother told me that she was talking about my high school dating but um that's a poor decision by the applicant to not find a place that is welcoming of their style I'd go beyond that and say it's really unethical of that applicant to be one person during the interview process and show up as somebody else on the first day at work. That's right. And, um, that's, I don't, I'm, I'm a very, I don't even like the word tolerant. We tolerate people. I'm an um, embracing person. I, I live in one of yeah. the reasons I love living in Miami, the different cultures, the different languages, the different, I mean, I, I love this melting pot environment. And I'm very much willing, uh, two consenting adults can do whatever they want. Yeah, and but also I'm very, but you know what? Show up, be, be consistent. Don't show up trying to be one thing and then be someone else. Be yourself. Get hired uh, or not on that basis. And I'll shut up. Thank you. No, no, I'm 100% with you. And Yolanta, you may have seen this in hiring you've done, but uh, we had an app at Gregory and Appel, we had an applicant. Uh, for receptionist who nailed the interview and told our chief financial officer before she left the room that you need to know that I'm blind, which had not been 
picked up at all. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, she has some prefer peripheral vision. She's, but but she's legally blind. And uh, our response was to blink and say, "Okay, uh, we'll make whatever accommodations are needed." Um, and and she has now moved through four different positions and is a senior member of of one of the teams. And goes home by taxi. Yeah. But she declared it because well, exactly it shouldn't be part of the decision making process. But as a courtesy, hey, yeah. I'm, I can do this job for you. I'm competent to do it. But you're going to have to make accommodations right. for or, me. I right. need every I need every Thursday off for medical reasons, and I don't need to tell you what they are. Whatever it is, just disclose it because right. you're going to spend more hours at work than you are awake at home with your loved ones. That's a good and way you're to put joining, it. You're joining a community of people you're yeah. going to have an impact on. It's yeah. not about it's not just about job competency. I mean, my takeaway here is that, and this is a point that you know, you've made a couple of times, and then we come back to again and again, that I ideally we all are required ethically to be responsible for ourselves, to be upfront to demonstrate competence, to demonstrate a commitment to do the job properly, to fit into the culture that we want to be part of. And when we are not willing to take that responsibility, that is what creates these problems in society. And then society has to kind of back into, well, now how are we going to address a culture in which individuals are not being responsible for themselves in a way that preserves as many of our freedoms as we would like to. And that's a challenge that I'm not sure we're going to solve today, especially since we're just about any time. Um, any final thoughts before we wrap up? Yeah, um, this is really, I'm glad you asked me in on this because I used to do a lot of speaking and presentations on basic how to be a boss stuff. I have pivoted the focus of my work to ethics and critical thinking because I want to be able to find out if can you teach ethics to an adult? Um, can you teach critical thinking uh, once the cake is baked out of high school? Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to find the answer to that question. And and forums like this help because it makes people think. I mean, I certainly hope that we're contributing to that. Uh, Yolanta, any final thoughts? Uh, no, just thank you for having me on the show. It's been a pleasure. It's de definitely thought provoking when you sent the scenarios like, wow, this is very interesting. <laughs> no easy answers, right? Grappling with the gray. Sometimes the gray is, is there's no clear. I, great, yeah, clear I mean, if these topics were easy, we probably we should have a vote. About I vote. So much. I, I vote for aggressive testing of politicians beyond age 65, said a 67-year-old man. <laughs> I, I vote for aggressive testing of them all, regardless of age. <laughs> age. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Well, thank you all. Uh, for those of you who are watching or listening, if you have a, a scenario you would like to uh, submit, please send it in. Go to yonasongoldson.com. Use the contact information. If it's compelling, we'll definitely take it up. And please join us again for future episodes as our panel grapples with the gray. Thank you.